Hey, today we're going to be looking at BBL versus Koi. We're going to focus on the lineups and the post plant stuff, and we're going to start with the first round. So, the first round, Omen has double TP, double smokes, we have double shocks, and we have double snake bite with, an orb, with an orb. So, this round looks pretty good overall for the game plan. So, the game plan is to get Omen in early to plant the bomb fast so we can get to the post plant, which is where we want to play because we have all this utility for the post plant, right? Pretty straightforward, honestly. Pretty good, pretty good for pistol as well. With there be going to be there's going to be very little util to stop you, and you're going to use a lot of your your utility, your limited utility, in one place for one thing. So it's going to be really impactful overall. You don't have to use it over the course of the round because you're going to have, obviously, you have less than what you would have in a buy round. So this is actually a pretty good way to play pistol. Um, and as you can see, they get the the bomb down pretty fast. It goes down at 119, 21 seconds into the round. And at this point, you think it's great until you look at the map and then you realize that the orb has been placed here. And unfortunately, it's missed its target completely. And it's for some reason, he can't pick it up. So that's a bit unfortunate. It might have been, maybe it may have been a bug why he didn't pick it up. But I don't know. Maybe there's, maybe there could have been an argument for them to pause and say like, well, I couldn't pick up my orb. So maybe there's an argument and the orb would have been on there, you know, if, uh, Maybe they would have paused and said, like, you know, this is a bug, can we, can we replay it or whatever? I'm not sure if that's actually how it works, but maybe. Um, it looks like it was a bug, though, because you can kind of see him going to pick it up, and he just doesn't. So, I don't know, it looks like a bug to me. Um, anyway, the problem is with this lineup, anyway, that's something I want to point out, is that the pathing of the Viper is going to be going mid after this lineup, right? They're going to do their lineups from this platform. The problem is with this lineup is that you're kind of going get your way to throw it. I don't like the, the Viper setting foot in a main if the game plan is for them to do lineups from main from, from mid. I much prefer if they one of two things. If there's a lineup from here, or even from here to be fair, that you can throw basically one or two seconds off barrier, and then you go place the lineup while the orb is in the air. I think that is faster than what, what happened here, first of all. So the, the Viper is going to be more accelerated into mid. The second thing as well, do the way you can do it, is place the wall, sorry not place the wall first. Um, as you know, you place the wall first, and then while you're on the way to mid, you then find a way to place your orb, right? So you place one from over here, you place one from over here, even better if it's on the same place as where you're firing the, 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 uh, the mollies from. Because that means you're going to get like the most efficient pathing to mid. The other thing I don't like is with the cypher pathing, with, with shade also over here, mid is not cleared. And it's not being defended anyway. In some ways, I don't mind it too much, right? Because there's going to be a lot of delay on the spike anyway. Hopefully from the Sova and from the Orb. Um, because the Orb is going to make the, the Shock Darts more lethal. So I don't mind the, that Shadows is, and, and, and Cypher is going to play super, super slow. Because he should theoretically have a lot of time. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, it doesn't really pan out. And he doesn't really find any aggressive windows. Um, because of the way that the, the raid sort of goes. Uh, and we'll play it now. So... This is what I don't like, is that the Viper now is pathing all the way mid. And you can see the Cypher and the Viper go up there together. And I actually don't mind this. I just think the Viper, the Cypher could have been a bit more accelerated overall. But it's just the timing of the round is so early still. Um, I think Stark's so as well. I think you might be able to point out what he did. But uh, I think actually he played it fine. Theoretically, this makes a lot of sense. Because this, this smoke can be really, really difficult to push into as defense. Especially as well, like when this smoke goes down... The Viper Wall goes back up, and it's super difficult for defense to take any base on A, potentially. It's just unfortunate that he got killed basically instantly and didn't get a trade or anything. He didn't get anything like that. And this is the problem. So, no real lineups from the Silver on this plant, first of all. They've both been three free-thrown. That means that there's no real way, like, there's no guarantee you're killing this person. You may hit them like you did, but you're not killing them. With the, the, to be fair, they may have gone through this in scrims, and he may have thrown them like this. But because the orb was decaying them, it killed them. But the problem is, is that he hasn't got a solid lineup for this plant, so it didn't kill them. Um, it killed them without the orb. So no orb means no no kill, and the viper lineups don't even come in on time. So massive problems really overall for the planning of this round. To be fair, arguably you can just say like missed orb equals loss. But I also think there's problems with pathing here both from i think the cypher and the viper and i also think there should have been lineups being like there should have been more consistent lineups being placed for the actual plant itself okay so we find ourselves on round 12 and unfortunately for stark so he's going to find out that pora has an operator the hard way and 
Paul ends up getting a kill. So I think this is where actually I think BBR makes a bit of a mistake. But they actually don't get punished for it. Um, so here they don't really need to re-aggress. Because they've already got the kill on, on Starks as well. So one of their smokes, one of the people that can make plays on their team um, to really equalize. Like the other one would probably be, like well it's going to be one of these three, right? Mainly. But the Omen is one of the ones that can really create really strong opportunities with his TPs, with his smokes, uh, with his paranoia. It's really, really nice to make opportunities with. And they've lost lost that that, that that presence. So it's really, really hard for Boy, in my opinion, to then equalize. So I don't think they need to be re-aggressing here. You just give the operator to the Yoru. He holds it. He also has his TPs for crop map. Cross map, I know his TPs there right now, but he could TP for put a place of TP over here for like cross map play if he needs to. If he gets one kill in tube, then TPs over to B. And they got B, B control then. So there's a lot of options for BBL here. They don't need to be aggressive, is not one of them, in my opinion. Yeah. Um so I think this is a bit crazy, but they end up not getting punished for it. Um, unfortunately. And then Camo goes Camo that time as well. I mean, in the meantime, went out onto A with his ult, cleared A, and they've got a plant. The problem is, is that now it's 3v5. Planting the bomb isn't necessarily the best thing to do in a 3v5. Sometimes you want to be playing the map a bit differently because you don't really you lose a bit of the control you have to play the map and seesaw the map around when you plant the bomb. Because planting the bomb is something that the enemy team you know is going to go do, right? And you can't really play the map and get people to rotate in certain situations and catch people off guard as easily. You have to do it in like a set way. And the thing is, if you do it in a set way, when you're doing it against good players, they're going to be aware of the ways they can catch you out when you're going to run to the bomb, right? They're going to be more aware of that. The only thing is then is like matter of timing, right? So I think here they kind of screw themselves over by planting here in a 3v5. I think they should have been playing the map a lot more. And I think it really becomes clear, like, their, their, like, game plan going in was way too rigid. Like, they, they were set in stone with how they wanted to play. And if they're not practiced on this, then it's going to be really difficult to win rounds, especially ones like this. So I think they really, really, like, screwed themselves over by planting here. So I would have liked them to see to play the map a bit more and just overall just have a bit more of mid-rounding going on here because... In this situation, playing for lineups like they are now, it's it's like a death sentence for the round. You're not going to win this round by playing for lineups. You just, it's just not going to happen. You're, you're not going to win this round. And to be fair, overall, it gets close. It does get close. Um, I think it ends up ends up being that four seconds into the round. Um, also, side note as well, <laughs> just want to quickly point out, they actually missed their lineup, their viper lineup. It's something you cannot afford to do. Um. And especially because I know that lineup is 100%, I have no clue how they managed to miss it. That that, that lineup is a there's a 100% lineup available there. You you can literally cannot miss that lineup, um, if you have practiced it correctly. I'm um, not even practiced it really. You just have to know what it is. So it's confusing to me that things like this can happen. Um, but I think the main problem was like the kind of like planting the bomb in the 3v5 for that round. To be fair, but we need to make sure we are actually getting 100% lineups. Okay, so round 16 is one of those rounds where you're questioning if what you saw was actually what happened. Um, so, first of all, I want to say that I do like the original game plan from BBL. I like the BBL game plan where you decide this round, where what you do is you place a TP over on B, you have two players near that TP, so if you want to, when you TP, you're strong side. Um, and what, you, what you're aiming to do is you're ulting on A, and then you're trying to identify what is actually going on on A. Um, is it the weak side? Are they giving this up? And if they're giving this up, you can just plant A. If they don't give this up and they're quite strong over here, you're probably going to just TP and then you've got you've got a strong side versus a weak side, right? Pretty, pretty good macro. Like, uh, that's actually a pretty good macro, right? Overall from BBL, I really like the game plan. The room plan. Some of the stuff I don't like, I mean, to be fair, I think this is more like a good play from Stark, so than a problem from Pora or BBL because I think the way that this map, like you're kind of having to set up the map here, going to be very very difficult for any player trying to like rotate through this way or play mid in any capacity to actually not die if there's any sort of aggression so i think this is more better play got a good play from stark so than like a problem from Pora because i think he's one he needed to dart for his teammate and you you basically going to be darting from this region It'd be kind of weird to dart from over here so for a um especially because as well like you want to try and mask this play and if you're darting from over here mid players are going to see it or and maybe even hear it so you don't really want to be doing stuff like that anyway so I think that, yeah, Paul is not really in the wrong here, just kind of unfortunate, I think, and good play from Stark. So Camo actually ends up getting picked off, and then 
elite can manage to get his ult off and it kind of locks the koi players in position now and this is where the scan goes off which is why something really confuses me now so th this so at this point every single bbl player knows where every single koi player is so why am i watching Kushner shoot the trap like he's under pressure and then he tps away like like he's about to get shot because he shot the trap like it just boggles my mind what just happened like why is he te like is it just like he just forgot he had that place there or, or something but that was the part that really like i was so confused and then elite managed to get a kill which is really really good really well played by elite i think elite played really well this game or at least he played at least he played better he was one of the better players in this game that's for sure um i think he played pretty good uh, overall um some of the stuff though from the macro for the cyphers though really did annoy me and actually just show in this round so also his kill so, that i forgot to mention elite's kill on grabino would have kept a brave here for a bit longer than he would have liked to be oh sorry yeah no stocks over here for a bit longer than he would have liked to be um he didn't really want to stay there for that long but he just had to uh because of potential plays going on he also might have thought as well the viper might have tried to get the gun in elbow although it didn't look like he was even thinking about that with the way he tp'd there but it is what it is next we almost got a, a mid fight but we it kind of got missed on timing and this is one of the parts i don't like from the cyphers that are actually that seem to be happening in this specific game anyway like if in my opinion like watching like someone like karen play um you would see like the aggression he can have he has like a switch where he's very passive early on when he needs to be but then he's really aggressive when he needs to be as well and he has that switch on him i didn't see that switch for the cyphers in this game and you can see that it now like with with elite pathing towards main like to me this is this is the easiest door path of my life like this is the easiest time to go path here like why are you creating the situation where all three players are the same angle like why would you not do this like that's the the reason that i like i'm so confused and also according to him his timing wise as well he didn't see anyone cross here so realistically re-exploring this area is something that you probably need to do in this situation but like you know it is what it is i guess it is what it is uh, also side note they also missed this molly <laughs> again another miss molly to add to the tally of this game the so shadow actually sticks the bomb at this point and to me like this was super close and in retrospect maybe you could have argued that you know elite getting these kills from the position he's in means that like maybe it's arguable that he should have been, you know, it made sense that he was here but think about it like this if he was up here he would have killed shadow first and then who's going to defuse the two peer players up main hell no not in this time frame so to me like this was such a throw from both teams and it just so happens that bbl managed to throw less than koi this round it was kind of a good effort by Koi in their situation, considering they were locked in place by the Cypher all fairly on, early on onto the post plant. But it was also such a throw from BBL overall. Yeah, so I think considering the advantages BBL had, I think Koi played it pretty decent on this round. I think the only it only really took like someone getting a kill on Kushner there at the end and they would have won that round. So yeah, I think BBL made a lot of mistakes this round. And I think Koi were kind of unlucky in a lot of ways to not win that. But I also think they made their fair share of mistakes too. So it is what it is okay so i think there's two things we can kind of take from what we've just seen the first one is about lineups so with lineups we want to try and find the most consistent lineups we can possible 100 percent lineups like the most consistent lineups they're, be they're the best but if we can't get those for the specific thing we want then we have to make sure we understand what those lineups are like we have to understand how to throw them when to throw them all that type of stuff and hopefully be as consistent as possible getting the practice in for them the second thing we're going to learn from this as well is about post plants in post plants we don't have to freestyle we don't have to do some crazy plays we've never done before we just have to make things as simple as possible and try and find like, boil it down to the fundamentals of the game making two angles for the uh, the opponent instead of one etc there's so many things you can do in the post plant but make sure that we're boiling them down to the simplest components Okay, so I hope you found this useful and you learned something. Um, if you want to see more content like this, then subscribe. It helps me out a lot and I'll see you in my next one.